On today's World Insight, Finland and Sweden, the cusp of joining the Military Alliance North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The impact on pan-European security, is it for the better or for the worse? Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. The Finnish government on Sunday announced that it has officially decided to apply for NATO membership and Sweden is to follow suit. That's a huge security policy shift of the two countries following decades of military neutrality. The decision is a tectonic shift of the security architecture in the European continent since Russian-Ukraine conflict in late February. And a major setback for Moscow, of course, as its military operation was started in part in response to NATO's eastward expansion. Russia has warned Finland and Sweden of retaliatory steps. Would joining the bloc give Finland and Sweden the protection they need? What measures could Russia take? For deeper insights, let's loop in our panelists. I'm joined in Helsinki by Devo Devanen, who is the professor of politics at the University of Helsinki. Meanwhile, in Brussels, Claude Monigay, who is the CEO and co-founder of European Strategic Intelligence and Security Center. And last but not least in Beijing, Wang Yiwei, Jean Monet Chair Professor and Director of the Center for EU Studies from Renmin University of China. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Professor Devanen. For Finland, who hadn't had any uh, military alliance or alignment for decades, what does that mean? How is that debate taking place among the Finnish? For a long time, possibility of NATO membership and what in Finland we call NATO option, the possibility to join if needed, has been debated. Public opinion has been quite strongly against NATO membership until February 24th. So after that, the debate has been surprisingly smooth since you have had on the one hand, a very big shift in the public opinion towards a pro-membership position. And basically all political parties, except one in parliament have been overwhelmingly for NATO membership. And even the one party left alliance has mm -hmm. accepted it as a fact. So the debate has been smooth in the last weeks. In your opinion, is it rather short term opinion as a result of the latest events? Or this is likely to be a long lasting uh, approval in the way of this possible decision? For the time being, it seems that in short and medium change, there's no going back to a situation where majority opinion would be against NATO membership. It was surprising when, even when Russia had conflicts with Georgia and attacked Ukraine before and all that, the public opinion didn't change, even mm. though in Finland, many anyway, ways saying, look, Russia has become more aggressive, maybe we should consider. But somehow February 24th changed the public opinion in a way that it doesn't seem there's going back now. Uh, how is uh, Finland likely to play its role in uh, interactions with Sweden, which has not been any military alliance for 200 years, in terms of its uh, attitude toward joining NATO or not? What's likely to be the Finnish role? Uh, in Finland, it's considered that the main role within NATO will be to provide collective security for the Baltic region. So for Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, smaller countries, Finland and Sweden will together play a role there. Obviously, it was thought all the time in Finland that there would be a problem if Finland joins NATO and Sweden doesn't, then Finland would be left alone between a neutral country and uh, Russia. So there's been a lot of coordination between prime ministers of Finland and Sweden. It helps that they come from the same social democratic party. Mm. And I, I consider it's more surprising that 
Sweden is also so eager to join the alliance, considering its much longer history of neutrality over 200 years. Now, different parts of the world are reacting to the news in different ways. Uh, to you, uh, Mr. Monique, of course, the EU countries are now pretty much already uh, all uh, member NATO members or on their way to be uh, NATO members. So what does that mean uh, to the EU's identity as well? It's an interesting move. Uh, in the European Union, we have for years now, for decades even, we have a debate on the possibility of the existence of a, a, a European defense pillar with a European army and so on. Very clearly, it doesn't exist and it's very difficult to imagine that it, it will exist really in the next future. So the, the strengthening of NATO, it's another option. It's an option which makes Europe more important in NATO and uh, especially with the, with the support of Finland and Sweden, which will offer, if I can say, to NATO, the control of the Baltic Sea, the complete control of the Baltic Sea. However, you talk about the importance of Europe uh, within NATO, yet many have looking at the procedures for, of NATO, for example, joining the NATO. First of all, need to have the approval submitted to the United States and then to uh, the, uh, the NATO as a whole. Some suggest that this is already showing the true colors of NATO, which is pretty much a US-led organization. Now, uh, Mr. Monique, how do you think uh, many of the Europeans, including Finnish and the Swedish colleagues, are digesting this fact? The, the question of the, the importance of the US in NATO, it's clear. Uh, the US is the biggest member of the NATO. The US Army is the, the most important with a lot of means that Europe haven't, hasn't. But the, the point is that uh, for uh, also for decades, Europe was asked by Washington to, to, to extend its, uh, its financial uh, um, investment in defense, at least to 2% of the, of the national products. Uh, and it, it didn't. So if we want to, to, to have the possibility to speak on a, let's say on the equality level with the US, at least we must make this, this effort to go to the 2% of the PNB for the, um, for the defense. Mm. Uh, of course, we will steal the, the small brother of the United States, if I can say, but if we apply by our uh, commitments, and if we we do what we have to do, and I think mm -hmm. with the Russian aggression in Ukraine, a lot of things are changing this way. We we will have clearly a better a better uh, position in the in the I alliance, see. and and with once again with NATO, with uh, Sweden and with uh, and with Finland, we could expect to have this uh, this new position. Professor Wang. When the spokesperson of China's foreign ministry being asked about uh, Finnish and even uh, Swedish uh, possibly uh, uh, voting to join NATO, uh, the Chinese spokesperson talking about what China has been advocating in divisive uh, and complete comprehensive uh, uh, security policy that China has been talking about, uh, about Europe's future. Now, Professor Wang, how do you look at, and the many uh, in China, in the circle, in the research circle, looking at the latest move? Well, uh, Finland, uh, Sweden, they are sovereign state. They have their uh, own choice. Uh, so we are not uh, interested with that uh, domestic affairs, firstly. But secondly, uh, Finland, uh, actually, as a neutral uh, state, was authorized by Russia after the Second World War, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, I signed another treaty. So the neutrality of Finland need to consult with, uh, with Russia, actually. So the Russians say this violent of the two treaties, uh, violent of international law. And also uh, 1975, the Helsinki uh, part, the Helsinki spirit, as you mentioned, of the common security, indivisible security, that is the security of the Finland should uh, consult with, uh, also take care of uh, Russia, which accepted by NATO and the US, but now all against, because you know you think about uh, Russia, it's a loser of the Cold War. Russia, you know, cannot win the war even in Ukraine. So everybody 
want to take the choice to uh, contain Russia, to put even claim of Russia to tomorrow will be uh, the most, uh, uh, the largest of the North Korea be isolated. The Social Democrats in Sweden uh, has been talking about uh, the importance, the unilateral reservation against the deployment of nuclear weapons and permanent bases on the Swedish territory. Professor Davenen, please uh, help me understand more about how is the issue of nuclear security being articulated? Uh, there has been some internal debate in Finland. The position of the government seems to be that for the moment, during the process of application, Finland is not likely to put any conditions like the kinds Norway actually has in NATO about not having permanent troops, uh, bases, or uh, nuclear installations in uh, its territory. Um, in Finland, it's normally uh, accepted that even if Finland wanted to have a permanent base or permanently installed nuclear weapons of NATO in Finland, it wouldn't be possible or at least probable for the time being. There aren't nuclear weapons in most uh, NATO member countries. But it's, it's a debate. It seems Finland mm. is also determined to join NATO that the government doesn't want to put any extra conditions on the process. That's exactly the question many have in mind. Though. Joining the NATO, accepting a membership of NATO means opening a floodgate to a lot of possibilities, both as what you consider a military and security protection, as well as obligations. Uh, it's going to be a collective uh, decision rather than a decision made by one individual country, such as Finland. So how do you see, Professor, given the quite intense uh, geopolitical tensions in the region and beyond, uh, that question will likely to raise in the future, in the probably near future? It may raise also in the context of nuclear weapons being often of the kind that they are not in one fixed place, but they move around in ships and airplanes and all that. And it seems to be an accepted fact in Finland that there are a few possibilities to really effectively prevent any nuclear weapons ever being within Finnish territory. Mm. But of course, NATO troops don't often make noise about which carrier of ships or airplanes has nuclear weapons. It's considered that there is uh, something that depends on the will of a country, in this case, Finland or Sweden. And as I said, it's even considered that even if the country wanted to have such installations, it wouldn't be likely like Estonia has been wanting to have mm. nuclear weapons on their territory for a good while, and they haven't. Now, let me go to you as well, uh, Mr. Monique, about the similar uh, question. Uh, how do you see the European countries' attitude, particularly those within the EU, since you're researching about that, uh, on the nuclear issue? And what would uh, the uh, future joining of possible fin Finland and also Sweden mean in that regard? I think that, to, to be clear, uh, NATO is a free alliance of free countries which, which keep, each country keep its sovereignty and decide for itself. So some countries don't want to have, for historical or philosophical reason, they don't want to have nuclear weapons on their territory. And the, the alliance could accept this because actually with the modern uh, nuclear power, and we have two nuclear uh, power in, in, into NATO, we have the United States and, and France. We don't need to have permanent nuclear bases in each country. As um, our Finnish colleague said, we have the possibility to deploy uh, submarines, uh, the, the French, the British, the, the, the Americans, of course, have a lot of uh, nuclear submarines which could activate nuclear weapons. We have the planes, we have missiles, we have a lot of possibilities. We don't need this. The other thing is uh, what is likely to be the relationship between Russia 
and Finland and Sweden. Uh, of course, uh, we see Finland, for example, uh, has been uh, not joining any military alignment and therefore also having and also having a long border with Russia. Now, how vulnerable is Finland going to be given the fact that some have been talking about once you push a big power, quote unquote, namely Russia to a corner, it is likely to react in ways that people would not be able to uh, imagine. Now, uh, Professor, tell me more about your thoughts on that. Yes, it's, it's considered that right now when the conflict is going on, the war is going on in Ukraine, as my Chinese colleague here pointed out, uh, it's considered that Russia would not have capabilities to have a conventional attack, let's say boots on the ground kind of invasion of tanks and troops across the border. In the future, the situation might be different. It is considered that there is a minor threat. I mean, minor in terms of probabilities, but, but catastrophic in its potentialities that since Russia cannot deploy the traditional conventional means of war, warfare against Finland right now, then in case of military conflict, they would use means that might be more destructive, which might even mean at least threats with uh, nuclear weapons. So obviously Finland has become more of a target for uh, Russian military, even though conventional capabilities are not there to have a conventional attack right now. Mm. Knowing that scenario, Finland still wants to do what is almost the deciding joining the NATO, Professor. Yes, that's, it's very clear that that's the will of the people and of the political parties. And uh, it's, there is a risk. It's considered that the threshold for any attack will be higher. So it's considered that hopefully this means more stability in, in, in the sense that aggressions like Russia has been doing in Ukraine are less likely towards Finland now. But of course, in the case of a major conflict, then Finland would be more vulnerable because Finland would be object of major attacks with, uh, of, with weapons of mass destruction as well. Uh, having said that though, Professor Wang, uh, we understand some of the media reports suggest that the uh, Russian president's reaction to the Finnish president uh, who was consulting with him about uh, Finland uh, joining NATO and the uh, military alliance was relatively cal calmer than expected. Now, uh, China has been uh, over the past few years uh, interacting both with Russia and Ukraine. How does China um, experts like you understand what is going on right here uh, about uh, the Russia's position in its own region and also about the evolving role of NATO now? Well, we understand that uh, Finland and Sweden, uh, they are felt unsecure from Russia. The thing about the maybe next uh, Ukraine uh, will be theirs. But uh, we'd like to remind our, our European friends and uh, colleagues that uh, the Europeans uh, life, uh, the living condition, welfare system will be in a huge problem because you should spend so much money on military. Uh, particularly for Finland, you have uh, more than uh, 1,300 kilometers territory uh, with Russia. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot uh, uh, of the permanent uh, uh, NATO uh, military bases or nuclear weapons, then you should spend lots of money. Uh, currently, uh, Finland only has uh, 15,000 troops. Can you imagine? So the need to have more than 280,000 uh, troops you know, immediately because for the long uh, territory uh, command uh, together with uh, Russia. So that's the huge burden for, uh, for Finland. And then your, uh, your economic, not just because you worry about uh, Russia will cut your electricity, uh, gas, uh, even for other uh, supply chain. So um, I think that it's a huge burden for the European society. So the US actually, push you to pay the costs, and then US can pivot back to Asia or now Indo-Pacific to, 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 to deal with China. 
So that's the gain actually, US win and the U- European lose. Let's have Professor Devanen to respond. Uh, it's obvious in Finland that there are costs here, even with the sanctions now. The idea is that when you put sanctions, you suffer yourself. So uh, now there are all kinds of sanctions on Russia, and they imply a cost on the economies of European countries. Finland's dependence through trade or energy dependence on Russia is much less than it used to be, and it's less than in some other European countries. So, for example, cut in uh, electricity, uh, Russia provides maybe 10% of Finnish electricity. It's likely that it's cut down now. So it means higher cost in electricity, but facing the threat that is perceived in Finland, it's a cost that Finnish people and politicians are are willing to suffer. The same thing with trade. Of course, in long-term, it's hoped that trade investments, tourism and other things we've had going on with Russia will Uh, come back to some sort of uh, level that would be normal between two countries. But right now in the short term future is not likely, but that's the price the decision makers of Finland and the people have Mm. stated they are willing to pay. The Finnish and the Swedish are doing right now, Mr. Monige, uh, to a certain extent indicate how people are looking at the evolving situation of the world. Uh, where the power is, where the security is, and how to interact with others, what are likely to be the principles, what's going to be the rules. Now, uh, Mr. Monige, how do you look at this the bigger context and the bigger logic? As I said, uh, but I can say it, I, I can put it in other terms. After the end of the Cold War, we had some American historians who said that it was the end of history. And what we see today is that the history is not finished. It continues. And history is not only a question of peaceful relations between nations, but it's also the question to protect and defend yourself against an aggressive power. And Uh today, clearly, Russia is the aggressive power in Europe, and we have to protect us. Mm. Professor Wang, the same question to you. What are the bigger message you are reading out of the latest events? Uh, as a European studies expert, I'm very worried about uh, that uh, this is not that the Europeans will pay the cost of the economy, budget, and military increase very rapidly. But most importantly, in Finland, particularly as a neutral state, you know, they produce so many uh, you know, UN officials, uh, their peacemaking, peace uh, building, in the, uh, even in the South China Sea, in many uh, dispute areas. So they, that's the uh, peace role of the Finland and Sweden. And now, if you join NATO, definitely you will lose that kind of leverage or image. So anything you should uh, think about the benefit, you also should pay the costs in, in general. Uh, uh, in Chinese understanding, you cannot choose your neighbor. Russia is your neighbor, uh, pretty for Finland. Uh, you cannot think about uh, your neighbor as uh, evil, uh, as an enemy. Uh, you know, airlines in NATO, they find an enemy, they make enemy, they divided the world because uh, uh, they're too much rely on the U.S. protection, and then you, uh, you are not equal to the other U.S. and the other uh, uh, part parties. So this makes the European security more in danger. Uh, traditionally, Finland as a battle zone, as a neutral state, uh, so in a Baltic uh, state and uh, a Scandinavia state, uh, enjoy the peace environment, but now everything lives in the shadow of the confrontation between NATO and Russia. So that's the way uh, I think uh, uh, I think about uh, uh, future. Mm. Professor Tabanen, also the same question to you. I think this is very important. How are we looking at the rules and the principles and the, the future uh, likelihoods of how the world is changing, taking messages out of uh, Finland and Sweden intensely considering possibility to join NATO? Of course, there is a uh tendency towards more militarization and a big tendency and possibility towards a new kind of bipolarization of the world where obviously China plays an important role like what attitudes China will take. Um, But I think um, in Finland, for example, many people who accept the fact that Finland is joining NATO 
do not see NATO in rosy terms. And especially there's a difference between younger generation and older generation in Finland, mm. where younger people tend to be more critical of NATO. And they grew up with images of, and sometimes it's confused a little bit, what is US actions and what is formally NATO actions, but war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan. And this means that younger generations in Finland have been a little bit more skeptical of Finland joining NATO. So uh, to go to NATO has all kinds of risks, like Professor Wang pointed out, and maybe it will mean, and it's an accepted fact, I think, that Finland will not be perceived in similarly neutral terms. Of course, Finland has not been, strictly speaking, neutral anymore in UN and peace negotiations and all that. Then again, we have example of Norway here in our neighborhood, and Norway being a NATO member has played a role in mediation peace and conflict resolution. And the fact that it's been a NATO member has not prevented it from playing that role. But it's an open question for Finland and it's a valid concern, I think, mm -hmm. that Professor Wang pointed out. Well, I want to thank the three of you for joining us and providing different perspectives. Uh, Devo Devanen and Claude Monigue, Wang Yiwei, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Inside or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of my team, thanks for being with us. Bye for now.